Anthropic just shipped something that I think a lot of people have been waiting for without even realizing it. It's called Claude Cowork. And if you've ever wished you could have that Claude code energy, that go do anything on my computer power, but without having to dive down into the terminal, this is it. I've actually been doing this for a while. I've shown you on this channel how I use Claude code for my notes, my research, for file management, even for script kind of execution. Turns out Anthropic noticed a lot of people doing exactly the same thing, so they built a proper interface for it. Let me show you what it can do. Okay, so this is Claude Desktop. It's basically the same thing as ChatGPT Desktop, so it's the installed version. It might look like the website, but it's just installed. Okay, here it is on my Mac. If you use Chat, it's basically just Claude AI Chat, same as website. If you go to Code, it's where you can interact with Claude Code from the terminal standpoint or even from the cloud standpoint. This one's pretty exciting, but we'll move on from this one for now. It's been here a bit. Cowork is the new one. This is the one that they've just released. Again, really caveats apply here for Max Plan and things like that. The whole idea here, though, is that you want to add a folder. You're going to need to select a single folder today. I think they'll be updating this soon. It can only have one source folder. Then it creates a little VM, a complete Linux VM, to lock everything down, and it can't really reach out to the rest of your system. That's kind of comforting to know and kind of worth it, but at the same time, a little bit limiting as it can't reach out to some of the places Claude Code could. So it's worth noting that's a limitation. Once you do that, then you have some of these here that are just kind of the quick suggestions, just like anything else. If you click one of them, you'll see that they're actually just kind of uh, prompt library mechanisms that will put the prompt down here. This is the moment when you want to have a conversation with or work with your local files. Now we're into it. Let's take a look at what that looks like in a real project. Okay, so I've got a folder that's been accumulating over a semester. Notes from a mythology class. Um, you know, each lecture has its own subfolder with like a PDF chapter that was handed out and the notes that I've written by hand. Uh, this is the kind of folder that grows until you can't remember where everything is. I'm sure you've got stuff like this. So let's take a look at what Cowork can do with something like that. Okay, first thing, watch what happens when I ask Claude to understand this folder. So I'm asking it, read enough around here to understand it and tell me what we're dealing with. And I've given it the folder that we're working in. So it starts running different bash commands, looking around, reading the different files so that it can understand what's inside of this project itself. And you'll see over here in the context, the things that it's already read. This is kind of the area of what it's been loading into its context. And it says, got it. Here's what we're dealing with, a semester's worth of Greek mythology course notes. Um, so it kind of finds all the different PDFs, all of the different text files. It found 100 pages, 2,500 lines in PDFs. Um, so this is not something that is your standard kind of chatbot information. This is folder level intelligence. So let's, let's ask something now that kind of spans multiple lectures. So the question here is, what's the family lineage of Zeus and which lectures cover this? And we'll kick it off. And of course, it's going to have to go through and basically read absolutely everything in our system. Once again, doing Claude code kind of work, opening files, dumping the files, researching, looking through, exploring. So it's really a lot of family or kind of folder level work once again. So this is very notebook LM related, except of course, very local. It says the ancestry is Chaos, Gaia, Kronos, and then Zeus. Uh, this was in lecture one. Here's the siblings, the marriages in lecture two. Lecture two also covered um, some of the children. Uh, and then all of the other lectures where things were covered. So this is really a great way of saying, I have all of my notes. I need to kind of figure something out. Obviously this doesn't need to be a course. It could be the meetings and the notes that you're taking in your meetings at work or anywhere else. But I don't just want answers in a chat window. I, I want files that I can use. And this is where this starts to shine. So I can ask it something like, build me a progressive study guide in Markdown to help me learn all of the relationships and the order. Again, references to the lectures as needed, and it will go off again, reading all of the material that it needs. Of course, it's looked through a lot of the lecture notes at this point, um, and it will build out a nice little study guide that I can work from. These personal artifacts are fantastic. It's really the whole point of using something like Claude Cowork or really Claude Code in your local files. 
And you can see over here, it's an artifact that it created. Those artifacts, that's really the concept of files it has written. It's of course in the same folder. If I open up the artifact, as we've seen before, you can see the whole study guide and it tells me kind of, here's the things that you need to study to best understand the relationship of Zeus to basically everyone. All right, but here's the thing that made me go, okay, this is very different. Right? So I'm going to enter this prompt, use ChatGPT with a Chrome extension to create one image for each lecture, fanciful, mythological, with a bit of silly. Try to add notes to each story in the image so I can follow along and do them in parallel. Now that last bit is kind of interesting. So let's kick this off. What am I asking it to do? Well, it's got all of these different uh, items inside of the different lectures. Those lectures cover different parts of mythology, but since I'm a visual learner, I can't just read through all of that and make sense of it. I'm asking it to go to each lecture, figure out all of the stories that are told in that lecture, and go use ChatGPT to create an image for it. What it's going to do is it's going to make a connection back here to uh, Chrome itself. Chrome with the, the Claude plugin, if you install the Claude plugin, it can start controlling Chrome directly, and it's going to create all of these different tabs to communicate with ChatGPT. And if we look back here, you'll see all the tabs are loaded. Let me wait for a moment for them to fully load. All 10 are, are ready. Now let me update the to-do list and send image generation prompts. So what it's doing is it's taking control of these things and it will create images on my behalf. Now, by the way, as you might notice, it had to go through and read all of the context to understand what I'm asking for. So it read all of the notes in all of the PDFs that we have, as well as all the lecture notes and now it's really baking them all down. This is pretty incredible. So there it goes, throwing down some of the prompt, create a fanciful, slightly silly mythological illustration for the origins of Greek gods. All right, it sends it off and the image starts to generate. Excellent. And if we come back and it, it, you can even see that it's saying, oh, tab 10 is, is uh, generating, tab one is generating but it was looking like two to nine didn't go through, so it's going to go through and work them in batches. And this is really one of those powers of what Claude Code brings to the mix. It has this ability to think through the problem, create a list up here that you can see in our progress list of all of the things it's trying to do, knows how to work through things progressively and check on them. All of this is because of Claude Code. It just feels like it's natural. Okay, and while it's working, it's actually telling me, oh, look, I can see the tabs. Here's what's on them. It says the first, first image is complete. Uh, chaos is swirling void with googly eyes. So it's really taking a look at the images and making sure that they're okay. And I've come back in while it's working. And this is a new thing as well. It's very, very useful. People that use Claude Code, this is not new, but people that use chatbots, this is very new. I can send more information, more updates while it's working. So it's kind of, queuing these things up and kind of guiding it while it's doing its work. And I told it how it might be able to download the images because with ChatGPT, that's not a very obvious thing. The disclosure's hidden until you hover or something like that. So it always struggles to do that. So I just gave it information on how it might go about doing that. And once again, exactly the same way as Claude Code, it compacts the conversation, um, obviously just using the Claude Code mechanisms to do this so that it can continue on and work for as long as it needs to work. This thing can work for hours without you coming back to it in the exact same way that Claude Code does. And, and this is just too much fun. I can't get enough of these images. So if we just kind of look through the different images that it created for us on all of the different chapters that we went through, all the different lectures, uh, this is kind of awesome. Okay, I just love that. That is a great example of how you can manage your notes with Claude Cowork or Claude Code if you don't have access to it yet because of the Max problem. But uh, I think this will roll out to everybody sooner than you think. And, and so if this one didn't quite resonate with you, I have another demo lined up. I'm gonna try to keep this one a little bit tighter just so you can see another way to use this, but it's just as excellent and really maybe makes more sense to what you do every day. Also, by the way, this is an opportunity for me, me to make a simple call out, please. Um, like and subscribe and click the little bell if you really want to see when I release these things. I can't seem to stay still with this, so I'm constantly doing these kind of experiments and demos. So if you're interested in this kind of work or something else, let me know down in the comments. I definitely get some of these ideas from you guys, and thank you.
Okay, so we're in another folder with another demo. Let's ask what's going on in here. All right, it says there's a demo script and the purchases CSV seems to be our data file for purchases. And I'm gonna say, okay, what are all the products that we sell? Um, how many sales, customers, etc. those kinds of things. And so the first thing it does is it goes and reads it, that puts it into the context area over here and we can open this up just so that you can see what's inside of this file. So it is a big CSV that works like a spreadsheet and it's looked through it and it said, okay, Here's the different things that we've sold. We've made $1,300 on the spring hoodie and $1,500 on canvas sneakers. Um, 80 orders, 44 unique customers. Excellent. Let's say we have a new winter hoodie coming out. I think people who bought it, or rather the spring hoodie, would maybe like this new hoodie. And, and maybe people who bought our sneakers might like it as well, since it has kind of the same design. Can you go through this data, figure out who's in each group, draft personalized emails, mention their previous purchases, uh, thank them for shopping with us and introduce the new hoodie. Okay, so what's important here, obviously, is that I'm talking to something that's intelligent and I'm basically trying to hand off a task to it. This is a relatively complex task. Go through our system, kind of collapse different users. We had 44 users and 80 purchases, right? So there's a lot of duplication. Uh, mention their previous purchases, figure out who purchased certain things, write personalized emails to them, which will be their username and email address or those kinds of things. Um, and so it has four questions for us. It says, what tone should it be? Let's make it casual and friendly. What's the price of the new winter hoodies? I don't know, it's a good time. Let's do 65 bucks. Any special offer to include? Um, yeah, let's give them early access. What format do you want the output? And at this point, I'll just say uh, markdown just so that we can see it here more easily. So it's already segmented the information. It's gone through all of this and I want to add some more information like, oh, let's make sure that these personalized emails are one file per email so that I can send them to another service in an easy way. But also, can you put them in a folder called emails so that we don't just have a whole bunch of files laying around? And that again is another example of, you can send information in while it's working and it will augment what it was last working on, replan, come up with new progress objects. Really neat way to work. Actually interesting, you can see that it went through and it found four customers that both bought both the hoodie and the sneakers and they're gonna make those approaches extra warm and mentions both products, people that bought the sp spring hoodie only, direct appeal, cold weather version of your favorite, same clean aesthetic as your sneakers. So that's kind of the personalization that it'll do. All right, so it says it's finished. Let's take a look at one of these. It admittedly did not put them in Markdown, it put them in text, which is interesting. Um, hey, Emma just wanted to say thanks for shopping with us. We hope you're loving, canvas, you're loving your canvas sneakers. Reaching out because we just released something we think you'll dig. Our new winter hoodie, 65 bucks. It's got the same clean, minimal design, et cetera, et cetera. So excellent. If you wanted to create this with templates or your own voice, then you'd put more documents in there saying, use the voice that you find in our kind of voice sample. All of that kind of stuff is available. Very, very cool. This system also has connectors so it can connect to Gmail and other places. You easily could set these up as drafts and then go approve them before you send them. This is actually out of the box, already ready to do some of this kind of work for you. So here's what I love about this tool. This gives you an opportunity to just explore your notes, asking questions across a whole corpus of information. If you have meeting notes or notes from a class or anything like that, um, you can also reach out to services like Notion and update your databases and Google. All those connectors are already there and it's only going to grow. It's something that they've said that they're already working on. But the caution here is simple. Review everything before you act. Remember, this is a brand new tool that they're working on. Um, things can be misinterpreted. This is an LLM. It's doing tool calling. They have put it into a VM, so it's relatively safe across your hard drive, but even that. So just pay attention while it's brand new. We'll get used to these tools as we move, but for right now, it's a first draft tool. Don't hand it something high stakes and walk away blindly. But for getting a first pass, for exploration, for doing tedious stuff so you can focus on the decisions, it's excellent. And hey, 
if you have things that you really need to work through a whole bunch of different files and you don't necessarily know how to do that other than writing something right now, like I think I need an application to take all of these and do something to them, this thing really might be something you want to look at. So, all right, should you try it? If you're a Mac subscriber already and you've got a Mac, yes, absolutely. It's right there in Claude Desktop, third tab. Point it at a folder, give it a whirl, see what you can do. If you're not a Mac subscriber, this probably isn't the reason to upgrade, at least not yet. Wait and see where it goes. It has real potential. But here's the thing. This is Claude code without the terminal. It's the same agentic power that's been changing how developers work now, available for everywhere else you work. And that's really the trick, is Claude code everywhere, kind of flow editing with everything, excellent. You bring the workflow, co-work executes on it. Go find out what this means for you. I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for coming along for the ride, and I'll see you in the next one.